The steepest street in the world is Baldwin Street in Dunedin, New Zealand. Or is it? I made some bold claims in my San Francisco video, and now the time has come to back them up. Are San Francisco streets indeed steeper than Baldwin? Or am I just an American living in a bubble? And Guinness World Records actually got it right. After 30 hours of travel from LAX to Sydney to Christchurch, with a five hour drive down the coast of New Zealand, which by the way is not as close to Australia as I thought, I finally arrived in Dunedin, proud home of the world's steepest street. That record is a big deal here. In 2019, the record was stripped from this lovely little town and given to Ford Penlick in Harlech, Wales. New Zealanders are some of the nicest people I've ever met. But if you steal something from them, they will bite you back. Dunedin local and surveyor by trade Toby Stoff took a look at Ford Penlick and he wasn't impressed. I couldn't see what all the hoo-ha was about. But Toby didn't just complain about it on the internet. He led a campaign to get Baldwin Street reinstated as the world's steepest street. And if you want to know how the rest of New Zealand feels about all this, all you have to do is tune into their local newscast, Seven Sharp. He is a wonderful New Zealander, mm -hmm. yeah. great New Zealander, yeah. and he has spoken some sense. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Toby, Baldwin Street reclaimed its title in 2020. But I'm a skeptic. It's not that I think Ford Penlec is steeper, I actually don't think either of them are the steepest in the world. And feeling a bit cheeky, I made a TikTok aimed right at the Seven Sharp team. We can't have that steepest street taken away as well, that's totally unfair. If you can cycle up it, mm. it's not the world's steepest street. It absolutely is. Okay, challenge accepted. I didn't think much of it, but while I was en route to New Zealand, a certain newscaster slid into my DMs. Hillary Berry and the Seven Sharp team wanted to film my attempt and I don't think they were too happy about my cavalier attitude. The story caught the eye of cyclist Mitch Boyer, an American who's on a mission to ride up the world's steepest streets. Mitch was confident, cocky even. The day before the ride, I went for a quick spin around Dunedin to wake up my legs, which were heavy from all the travel. This place is miserable. I don't know why anybody would ever come here. Horrible place to go ride your bike, honestly. It just looks horrendous. I deliberately avoided Baldwin Street because I wanted to save my reaction for like the day of. And besides, Dunedin has plenty of other steep streets. While shooting this series, I've noticed a pattern. If a hilly city's infrastructure was built at the turn of the 19th century, there's a good chance they have steep streets. And that's because of the grid system. City developers of that time ignored topography in the name of rectangular blocks. The result is very straight, very steep streets. San Francisco is possibly the greatest example of this. When was Dunedin built? You guessed it, late 1800s. Interestingly, like San Francisco, Dunedin was a gold rush town. But it has something San Francisco doesn't. Penguins. So I made my way out to a penguin preserve on the peninsula. Unfortunately, it was closed. What a bummer. Hopefully tomorrow's ride will go better than my impromptu penguin hunt. It's still raining. I don't know, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. The news crew from Seven Sharp just landed here in Dunedin. I don't love having like an audience. So I'm pretty nervous about that. If it wasn't for them, right now I would just be waiting for the rain to pass. Seeing Baldwin Street for the first time felt like meeting a celebrity. I've been reading about this street in the comments section for months. I traveled across the world, and now it was right in front of me. I arrived before the news crew, so I took the opportunity to ride up a parallel street to make sure my tires had enough grip in the wet conditions. Don't let the camera angle fool you. This street is plenty steep at around 20%. Streets like this are a dime a dozen in cities like Dunedin and San Francisco. But in almost any other city, they'd be among the steepest, if not the steepest, in the entire town. But what makes a street qualify for a Guinness world record? It took some digging, but I eventually found the criteria a street must meet for that record. 
If you think you have a street that's steeper, get ready to jot this down. Number one, the grade must be measured from the middle of the street, and grade is defined as the average grade over 10 meters, or 33 feet. That rule eliminates San Francisco's Bradford above Tompkins, which does have a 41% grade, but only lasts nine meters, or 30 feet. And the fact that it misses out by a meter kind of feels personal. Rule number two, the street must be a commonly used public thoroughfare. That eliminates Baker Street in San Francisco, despite having a steeper average gradient than Baldwin Street at 36.4% for 64 meters or 211 feet. And the third and final rule kills San Francisco's toughest street, in my opinion, Broderick, which has a steeper gradient, is a commonly used public thoroughfare, but does not allow vehicles to drive up it. To me, those rules feel a little arbitrary, but I guess you gotta put the goalpost somewhere, right? Baldwin Street should be a walk in the park. And here she is, 350 meters, and at her steepest gradient, 34.8 degrees. You mentioned Toby, the surveyor, and as luck would have it, because this is New Zealand, we've invited Toby, and Toby's here. Wow, a local hero. Hardly. <laughs> New Zealand's most loved surveyor. <laughs> you are New Zealand's most loved surveyor. I mean, you must be pretty proud that Mitch has come all this way because this is the steepest street. Look, it's a huge honour to have someone travel halfway around the world just to, to ride up, you know, one of our streets. So, yeah, no, this is awesome. Okay, Mitch, good luck. Hey, Toby, now that Mitch is gone. Yeah, I hope his chain breaks. I saw... If you watch my other videos, you know the rules. Gotta finish the climb, no zigzagging, and no barfing. That last rule is very important today because, as you might have noticed, I have the Insta360 Go in my mouth. It's their lightest camera, and being light is the name of the game with these steep climbs. My trusty Insta360 X3 is strapped to Toby's truck with the news crew, giving us all a bird's eye view of the climb. The fisheye here does exaggerate the angle a little bit, but I think it better represents the feeling of how steep this street is. Here on the left, you can see the power I'm putting into the pedals measured in watts. For reference, your cell phone uses about five watts while charging and a big screen TV, 200 watts. Here is my heart rate and here is my cadence. There's also gray, but it's GPS data, which is notoriously inaccurate. On the flat, I try to keep my cadence around 90 RPM. On the climb, anything above 60 is usually fine for me, at least for a little while. Anything below that, and my muscles quickly start to fatigue. You never want your cadence to start dropping on a steep climb. Are you okay? What happened? Can we all go down the bottom and try again? We cannot be beaten by balls of... Most of the steep streets I ride up are short. I get up them in around 30 seconds or less. The longest in San Francisco was Broderick, which I got up in 58 seconds. <laughs> uh. That was kind of by design. If you take a look at my power profile, you can see I have decent power until you hit 60 seconds. And if you look at the clock, that's just not going to cut it this time. Ah. I just didn't have it in my legs. Oh, <sighs> wow. I don't know why I'm, I'm puffing in sympathy. I don't know if I'll have the power to do it. Just <sighs> kill this one. I'm taking a breather. The newscasters are, uh, they're giving me a bit of a break. Two attempts. Didn't make it up either one of them. I gotta do it this time. Gotta do it. I get a lot of questions about my bike. It's a BMC road machine. 
a road bike with fairly typical gear. Up front, I have a 5236 chainring. In the back, I have an 11 to 34 cassette. That means my lowest gear combo is 36-34, or in plain terms, one revolution with my pedals rotates my back tire 1.058 times. So basically a one-to-one -one ratio. If you wanna make going up steep streets easier, there are three things you can do. Number one, you can put a bigger cassette on the back of your bike. Like this 10 to 52 cassette on my gravel bike. Unfortunately, it just doesn't help that much. I tested it on Fargo Street, a 32% grade by my house. With that huge cassette and a cadence of 55 RPM, I still needed to put out an average of 373 watts to get up the hill. Big cassettes help a lot on a 15% climb, but once you get past 20%, it's just gonna hurt no matter the cassette you have. That brings us to option two, get more power. If you get stronger, it gets easier. Profound, I know. The last thing you can do is shed weight. I swapped my normal wheels out for these super lightweight wheels from Hunt, saving me about 200 grams. The bike weighs 7.7 .7 kilos with pedals, bottle cages, and bike computer. The camera I'm using is lightweight too. The Insta360 GO 3 comes in at 36 grams. I don't think it's possible to find an action camera that's any lighter than that. A more economical way to save weight would be skipping dessert in the months leading up to the attempt. But as you can see, I obviously didn't do that. All right, coming up on number three. I just want this to be done, to be honest. After taking a break and warming himself up, Mitch was back for a third go. Would it be a final ride for redemption or a humiliating heap of metal and lycra on the pavement? With my ego thoroughly bruised, I fully embraced the zigzag. As I approached the spot where I had fallen two times before, my legs began to burn, my cadence dropped, and I knew I was about to fail again. But then, I heard something. A group of tourists had paused their hike to cheer me on. They probably didn't know it, but they saved me. Go Mitch! Go Mitch! Go boy! Go! Go! Are you good to that is no joke. I am so pleased for you. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how invested I was in this. I was so nervous for you. New Zealand. I owe you an apology. Based on the streets that I've ridden, you deserve your Guinness World Record. Seven Sharp not only filmed the attempts for their segment, they generously lent me their footage for this video, and I cannot thank them enough. Do you feel like you did underestimate it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I'm not done yet. In the next video in the series, I'm headed back to the States. Drop your guess in the comments. I bet one of you will figure it out. And if you want to support this series, first off, thank you. One of the best ways to do that is by purchasing an Insta360 product using one of my links. I recommend the Insta360 GO 3. Honestly, this whole thing has me questioning this project. If this is the steepest, then awesome. I made it up. If there are steeper hills, I've got some training to do.